let's show you how to set up the Juki 9000C Industrial with no cuts, raw footage, so you know how easy it is to set up this machine. Hey guys, it's David from GD's Fabric Shop, Juki Junkies, and Janome Junkies. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up the Juki DDL 9000C FMS sewing machine so that way you know how easy it is to set up. You might actually be able to use this video for an instructional video if you're a fast paced learner. We're gonna show you all of the things that I'm gonna be doing while I'm setting it up, but it's just not gonna be as instructional as my other video that's a little bit more slower paced. We talk about little things more in detail, but in this video, you're just gonna see it quick and easy how fast it is to set up the 9000C. So let's get started. Okay, so the timer is not gonna start quite yet. I'm just wanting to show you how this is gonna arrive at your doorstep. You're gonna see it's gonna be set up just like this. You're gonna have some ceram wrap around it and maybe some metal strapping. Once you remove that, then it's time to start setting it up. So I'm gonna start the timer once it's all off the pallet, but the first step to setting it up is bringing it inside. So the freight company is gonna drop this off at your garage door or your front door, and then they're gonna call you right before they drop it off so you're aware, then it's time to unwrap the ceram wrap, take off the metal strapping, and grab somebody to help you pick this machine up. And you can just move it off the pallet like so. And don't worry, this box is in some serious styrofoam, so your machine will not be injured. Now you're just gonna walk up on the pallet and you're gonna take your table off. Now, if you ordered casters like me, your casters might not already be on the table, you might just have to screw those on, which will take only a couple seconds. They'll be in a little tiny box right next to it. But um, mine already had the casters on it because this was obviously a little bit staged as far as the pallet goes. So let's go ahead and move this pallet outside. Okay, so we got the box off the pallet. We got the table off the pallet. The table is gonna be arriving to your house fully assembled. We got the board on there. It's already assembled the head of the machines in the box. This is how all of our industrials ship from JukiJunkies.com. So now that it's here, we're gonna start the timer and I'm gonna just and just start working. So here we go. Starting the timer now, let's go. Now I'll talk a little bit, but just remember, it's not gonna be a super slow instructional video. We've got another video out there for that. So if you're interested in watching this nice and slow, click in the link in the description. We'll have a full video on this setup slower. My goal is to set it up as quick as I possibly can. Thread stand, hinges. Drain pan, okay. Got all that out. The first thing I'm gonna do is open up my hinge bag. Drop these in the back two corners. Drop these little rubber pieces in the front too. And then these small ones can go in the back. They're not really that big of a deal, but we'll put them in. Now we have all these little nails. Grab this big flat head. nails. As a lot of you guys may know, this 9000C is by far my favorite industrial sewing machine. And I'm going to do a full video on why it's my favorite industrial machine after this video. So these little nails just hold these rubber corners into place. These back ones are not all that necessary, but might as well put them in. And you could use a punch and that'd be a lot easier than a flathead, but I forgot to grab my punch. Done. 
easiest way to do these is if you can like kind of just get a nice little tap to hold them in place. But the wood that's on these tables there is actually pretty strong. And then you could just tap it in the rest of the way so it's not lifting up like that. There you go. Forgot. I got one. These little rubber hinges are even harder. These ones you really want to push with your finger first to get them started. And then you can hit them in the rest of the way. This is honestly probably the hardest part of the setup is hitting these little nails in. <laughs> Which to speed this up, I would recommend a metal punch. Three more. I want you guys to drop a comment down in the comment section below right now. Pause the video, drop it down, tell us what time you think it's going to be without looking at the time of the video. And whoever guesses the close, closest time to the second, I'm going to ship you out something special from our inventory. And I'll pick the winner, let's do three weeks after this video goes live. So just guess some times down below. Closest one to the second will win or be given something special from our website. Ugh. You want to make sure these nails are just below the rubber so that way they don't push up on the metal pieces that we're about to put on. Boom, done with the nails. Okay, so now I'm going to tip this over, get all the little debris out of that, drop that oil pan in. And then throw this bag over there. This is the little plastic peg that holds up the machine. Perfect. All right, now I have the option to set up my rails or take the machine out. I'm gonna take the machine out. Ooh, that's not good. My knife just broke, improvising. Flathead screwdriver for the win. This is raw, I can't run away for a razor blade. I don't have time for that. Flathead works great. Now this is my least favorite part. Actually, not really my least favorite. This is the back breaking part though. This is where you want the muscles. All right, so we got the machine head exposed. Deserves a little bit of a break there. Throw all this stuff out of here. All right. Genuine. All right. We got the machine head in. It literally just sits right into the table. You tilt this bad boy forward. Put these metal hinges in there. So 
front tilt it forward, put these hinges there, and now my machine will tilt back and forward. Whew. That one really wears you out. Throw this in there. All right. So now that I have that done, I'm gonna turn this bad boy around and start plugging in some wires. This is actually my favorite part of the setup. A lot of you might be like, you're crazy once you watch this. But the reason I like this part is I'm not a techie person. Don't tell me. I may have just stripped a screw. Okay, I'm gonna run. You can keep the footage running so the time's accurate. I gotta grab a flathead. I'm sure you guys can still hear me. Whew. I'm going to get a Phillips head. This screw looked just a little bit stripped. Honestly, it looked a little stripped before I even got to it. Won't put a lot of pressure on it. Okay. Boom. Okay, so what was I talking about? Why this is my favorite part? Uh, this is my favorite part because I feel like a computer geek whenever I finish this. And honestly, I'm not a computer geek, so it makes me feel really tech savvy, even though it's really not all that difficult, but I just feel so genius. I feel like I could hack stuff after doing all this. But anyways, enough with the nonsense. Let's go ahead and get all these wires kind of untangled here. And you're just gonna wanna slowly start feeding them through this big old hole here. And as you feed them through this hole, there's no really rhyme or reason which way you feed them, as long as you just feed them all through there. I like to try to maximize the length of these cables as much as possible. So just get creative on the way you do it. But I just feed them through with like the lowest wires that are coming out of that hole going first and then the farthest go last. And it seems to work for me. Um, let's see. So this, long story, I'll tell you guys a story while I'm doing this actually. I was setting up a J150, which if you guys didn't know this already, the J150 is literally the exact same machine as this. It was just a home sewing model. Um, it was an industrial machine, but they brought it to the home sewing industry, so that way home sewing dealers could sell it. And that machine was identical, but they took it out because it was not selling, I guess, as good as it, they wanted it to, because the price was a lot more than the 9000C, and the only real thing it offered was the feed dogs dropping. But anyways, that machine's gone now. Now it's just the 9000C. And I set up a J150 a long time ago, back before I was even really working here full time for my parents. And I drove like three hours away to set it up. And I really wanted the money because, you know, you make a decent amount of money sometimes when you go set these up three hours away. So I was setting it up and man, I was having some issues plugging all these wires in. I couldn't figure it out. It was late, Juki was closed. Oh, it was a really stressful situation. I think I was there probably till way past the time I should have been, but okay. So now the best angle is just gonna be this whole board the whole time. This is my ground wire. You can just undo really any of these screws and, and put that in for the ground. And now it's just matching these all up. 
Ooh, that's actually not going to work there. The wild wire was kind of tangled. I like to try to put everything through. This one zip tie. Okay. And then I like to go through this thing. All right, so these should all have labels on them, roughly. That one, of course, doesn't. And you just have to find the wire that it fits. Um, oh, okay. Boom. See what I'm saying? Like, this is super cool. Cool stuff here. This wire is puts in right here, but it blocks a lot of the path of all my other wires. So I'm gonna actually skip that one for now. This one's uh, C22, C22. Boom. Let's put this weird one in. What is this? Okay, four. And there's really not a plug that you could put in that won't work with it. If it's gonna fit, it's 99, I mean, I'm, I think I'm 99% sure that it's gonna be the right plug. C21, yes, C21. So you can literally just count the prongs on most of these things and if it goes in, it's, you know it's the right one. Oh, okay. What ended up happening with that J150 that I was talking about earlier setting that machine up? I can't remember exactly what happened, but I think I ended up getting a hold of like a Juki Tech in the middle of the night, pretty much. <laughs> it was like 10 o'clock at night or nine o'clock or it was really late, whatever time it was. I don't think I got home that night until like 12, 30, one o'clock. But that's what's fun about setting these up is sometimes you run into errors if you've never done it before. And it's always something simple that you're missing. This one is two. Okay, where is two? two, two, two. This one I think always gets me. Um, two, two, two. Where is the two plug? All right, we're gonna come back to that one. We're on a time crunch here. This one is definitely Definitely this one. This one is definitely. Definitely this one. Actually, I'm going to try to feed this through here. Just a little clip there. Okay, now let's do this big boy. Try to squeeze this back through this way. We're like seconds away from hacking the system, guys. Here we go. One more plug. Where does she go? It always comes down to the wire on this. Huh, look at this. You laughing at that? That's a funny joke. All right, uh, I see three. You see two, camera lady? You see two? Oh, I see two. It's right here. Boom. Okay, so now that we have all the wires plugged in, I like to just do one last visual check. And then I also like to go ahead and hit this zip tie. I love how I'm like, this is not gonna be an instructional video. I'm just gonna go raw. But honestly, it's still a raw cut video and I'm still setting it up fast. My other video is just a little bit more explained. All right, so now that I have all the wires plugged in, I just double check all the connections because I don't wanna have to take this cover off again. Okay, everything looks good. So now, literally, you grab this cover Make sure you don't pinch any wires. Which this is always, personally, this is always the part that doesn't line up perfectly without moving stuff a little bit. I like to kind of scoop them. There we go. Okay. So once you get all that in there, I'm going to readjust myself. That's going to fall. 
kind of have to hold this thing on with pressure. Sometimes it's nice to have two hands on this one. But literally, guys, the setup, believe it or not, is pretty much done after this. But not yet, so don't click off. All right, here we go. One done. Now you got to get this one over here. This one looks like it's needs quite the shove. There we go. Good. And this screw's already here. And okay, so now that we've got that done, keep in mind if you don't get all four screws to tighten down fully, it's normal. Most of the time I only get three, but that time I got all four. Okay, so now that we have that plugged in, all the wires are plugged into this machine. We're literally ready to run. The machine would work right now. We just don't have the thread stand on or the thread guide. So now we're setting up the thread stand, which this is honestly the easiest part. Sometimes do this part first because it's satisfying and you think you're really close to being done, but it's the easiest part. So, oh my gosh, get that, show them what just happened. Just shot out like a firework. Somebody should pay me for that show. It's the 4th of July over here. Okay, so the first thing I do is unscrew that. Rubber washer, metal washer. Forgot I'm not teaching right now, I'm just speeding. I hold this nut on the bottom. I usually just rotate this rod with my hand. And you can use your adjustable wrench to tighten it down, but honestly, you don't need it tighter than that usually. Okay, now put these bad boys on. And these are my thread spool holders. I don't know about you guys, but these are my favorite videos to make because they don't require me to act extremely professional like all my other videos. And I'm sure it's the editor's favorite videos too because guess what? She doesn't have to do anything besides throw a little timestamp up and maybe put some little pop-ups as I'm going. She's done. All those other videos you guys watch that we post every Sunday, those can sometimes take the editor and me to make probably like a whole day and a half, two days. It's a lot of work to make videos, especially when you mess up and say the wrong things and then you have to restart and then the SD card gets corrupted and you have to remake the whole video. That's when it's not very fun. So I just do washer, lock, washer, nut, put these on there. Push them down all the way. Boom. Boom. These are anti-vibration cones for those big spools that you run on these machines. Big old industrials like the big spools. If you didn't know this already, this machine runs at like 5,000 stitches a minute, which is insane. <laughs> it's like five times the speed of a home sewing machine. So if you want to go fast, Look no further than the 9000C or all the other industrials in this world. Chuki industrials are amazing. All right. Also, if you see me sweating, it's not that labor intensive. I just sweat whenever I'm rushing, I think, or also just because I'm in Florida. My body just naturally sweats just because it knows we're in Florida. Tighten those down, boom, boom, boom. Bring this up maybe a little bit more. All right, let's try to just clean this up. Get the final shot of it, look at that. Beautiful, oh, seriously, this is my favorite industrial. Okay, so now that we have everything done there, we literally just have to put this little thread guide, I think it's right here. Yep, 
put that thread guide there. And I'm even gonna include throwing the oil in the machine as the setup, but technically we're done. But we'll continue it and we won't stop the clock until we put oil in the machine. Because why not? What time do you think we're at right now? I don't know. It feels like we're at like 25 minutes probably. Close. 25, 39. 23. 23? That's not bad, dude. This is this is a really cool machine for a 23 minute setup. And like after you watch this video, if you watch it a few times. You could set it up in 23. You could beat my time, especially if you're a real computer geek. You know, you can really plug in those wires good and fast. So I'm just filling this up until this little red line's at the full mark, which I guess I didn't put enough oil in this yet. And another fun fact about this machine while I'm setting it up is it has an oil reservoir and it's fully sealed. So don't worry about ever like getting oil all over because this industrial is a very clean machine. A lot of the other industrials have like oil pans and sometimes oil can leak. This one is not like that. Okay, we got the full mark. Put this little cap in and we're done. So stop the time, stop the time. I mean, I'm OCD, so we're not done until it's like spotless, but we could stop the time. What do you think now? Stop it? We'll stop it when it's like clean, clean. <laughs> Like, like it's like presentation clean. Boom. Okay. Setup is done. Minutes. Less than 25 minutes, you can have a Juki 9000C set up at your house. So if you're looking at an industrial sewing machine and you're just like, ugh, the setup, the big machine showing up at my front door, I just, I think I'm just gonna order a little box. Don't get me wrong, the Juki home sewing machines are all fantastic, but this machine is amazing if you're running a small business at your house you have an etsy shop you're looking to step up your game you're looking to get something that is an industrial made to run you know multiple hours a day uh, multiple days a week this is what you want to start getting into these industrials are built like a semi truck super heavy duty uh, made to run all the time and this is by far my favorite industrial so definitely check out the ddl 9000c i'm going to make a video right after this video after I get my breath, dry my sweat off, and clean up the area a little bit on why this is my favorite machine, and I'm gonna show you some features that are unbelievable on this Juki 9000C. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give us a like, comment down below your favorite part, and tell me if you're close to the number. I can't wait to see what you guys guess. I hope you guys did that. I hope you participated, because I'm curious what you guys are thinking. And I know you can see like the overall time, but you don't know the exact time. So, and I still don't know the exact time. I think it was like 23 what? You don't know yet? Okay, so she's gonna tell us. She'll pop it up on the screen, and I'm gonna pick a winner in three weeks from the day this video gets posted. Um, so it'll be three videos out, and I'll pick the winner. I'll probably pick it in that third video. And I'm gonna send you out some extra little special goodies from our Juki Junkies warehouse. So just like that, give us a like, comment down below, hit that subscribe button, because we post every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I hope you guys had a great Sunday and we will see you next Sunday. You have a great day and bye-bye.